Hi, Brittany. Hello. Are you are you the uh, wizard? You are the wizard. The Wizard of Oz. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes. For today, I am. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I barely talked to you in the last two days. How are you? I'm good. Yeah. For days. How are we? Oh my gosh, I'm good. It is so good to see you. It's so good to see you. It's so good to see everyone that's here. Hi. Oh, oh, this is so great. Oh, the color in your, like with the natural light is so nice. Oh, thanks. I, um, the sun is coming right in and it'll probably start to go down in about 40 minutes or so, but it lands right where I set up my office in my space. So it's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> hey, so yeah. are, you, are you wearing the periwinkle turtleneck from Kira Grace? I am. <laughs> and I really like it. And I'm like, I need to get some more because I realize I'm like, okay, I really like this. And I haven't worn like, uh, I think I was telling Summer this, her name's Summer, right? Yes, Summer. that's You're me. Here. There you are, Summer. <laughs> I was like, or was she the Summer intern? I couldn't, okay, yeah. it's been a lot going on. So Summer, mm -hmm. I was telling Summer, I was like, I haven't worked in corporate America in a year. And so me dressing up, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I'm dressing up for this <laughs> And I love mm -hmm. it. And it matches the brave candle, which we didn't it even does. plan because I didn't, I got this well after I sent y'all the brave candle. So, mm -hmm. and the picture is so good of you with the candle. It's so I, cute. So oh, good. thanks. Thanks. I was like, Oh, I guess we're, we're, we're doing this. So yeah. yeah. But yeah, thank you. I love it. I love it. It's really so small. cute. It's good. We might want to give ourselves a few minutes for people to join us. I think Summer, how many people registered for the event? We have 24 people so. who have registered. So we had a couple of late signups, like four late signups, like in the last like 30 minutes. Good. So we'll see. Okay, great. I know I had a couple of friends that are like, oh my gosh, I won't be able to be on the computer. I said, Colin, nobody gets an excuse. <laughs> yeah, you can take your screen off totally. Um, Ace, how have you been since we last saw you? I have been really busy in like a full, blessed, and abundant and grateful way. Like I'm getting ready to go on. Um, my first yoga retreat to Mexico, Puerto Vallarta, Mexico in a few weeks, that's completely sold out. So I am just like ironing out the details for that. And so I'm just feeling really blessed right now. It has been a, it's been a journey. It's been a really full year. Um, and yeah, I've gotten some like other opportunities that just keep like flowing in and flowing in. So I'm adding things to my businesses, my offerings. Um, tapping into my 15 plus years of marketing and business development experience. And so that's been really nice to kind of go back to for a little bit. So I've been well though. I've been, I've been well. It's not like my voice, this voice thing happened. I lost my voice after my second shot. I was sick for like three weeks, mm. like a long time. And I was like, I'm so grateful I did this because I just didn't know how this thing would even affect me. Um, praise God that I just never, you know, had to experience it. But um, so my voice is like this, um, but I've embraced it this far. I was like, oh, do you have a little bit of cold? I'm like, no, <laughs> mm -hmm. I guess it's just time for me to talk less, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, totally. overall, I've been really well um, maintaining a strong sense of self and business and um, yeah, just, you know, and business is, business is busy um, and yeah, really grateful, really grateful for this opportunity for sure. So I'm glad it worked out before the end of the year. <laughs> Congratulations on Thank your you. um, retreat. That's fantastic. It must feel good to get it to travel. It, it's, I'm so excited. Puerto Vallarta, I've never been, so I'm really looking forward to it. <laughs> well, really looking forward. We thought about like doing some last minute getaway there, actually. But. Oh, nice. Well, 
I'm excited to report back. <laughs> so I'm heading there. <clears throat> Which resort are you staying at? Um, it's uh, Shinalani. Um, it's, you know, I'm excited because you can only get to it by a boat. And Jen Pasiloff did a retreat there years ago. So like I said, I've never been, but she was like, oh my God, that place is so special to me. I was like, awesome. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Vega. Hello. <laughs> Well, Lisa, maybe we just kick off and people can join as they as they come. And I know that we'll have this recorded and we'll send out the recording and have it available as well. well that'd be great. And I'm sure there are a lot of people who are going to you know, probably be trickling in during class. But just wanted to kick things off and just say hello to everybody. Welcome to another one of our women-owned small business events. And it's today our VIP. You all are our VIPs, but we have a special guest. Ace Alicia Easter. Now, just to let you know, just a reminder that I know, like I see the little clapping hands, that's wonderful, that um, we at Kira Grace, we are so appreciative of our community, that's you. And so we wanted to really find a way to pamper you. So we put together this very special Grace Rewards VIP program. And Summer is going to be dropping a link into the chat that's going to take you to the page that has all the information about all the wonderful things that you can get in association with it. There's three tiers and all that information is going to be there. Now, in addition to that, we have these VIP events because our team has curated, we think some of the most special products and small women-owned businesses. And each month we have a little VIP event where we introduce the product and we highlight the woman behind the product. So today that woman is a we otherwise known as, I should say, Alicia Easter. And Alicia is, oh, and everybody who's here is going to be, as long as you're still here, you have the opportunity to be entered into a raffle to win Iron Brave Handle. So I don't know, Alicia, if you want to ace, you can ace or Alicia. You can call me Ace. Okay, Ace. Yeah. What's so. Your handle? Um, yeah, of course. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks so much, Lisa and the Kira Grace crew here. Y'all are awesome. I'm so happy to be here. Um, yeah. As Lisa mentioned, my name is Alicia Ace Easter. And so I'm based out of Los Angeles, California. So yeah, this is my candle line, the I Am Candle Collection. And I'm excited to have one lucky person win, win an I Am Brave candle. And um, the I Am Brave, I don't know if y'all can see it. It's a little bit of a glare off my computer right now. But essentially, I Am Brave was inspired from a mantra that I um, say in my yoga classes. And when, um, and when the pandemic happened, when we all kind of had the shelter in place, it's like, where are we going to, I mean, I got to talk to my people. I got to talk to my crew. I got to talk to the students, the community. And so I started a candle line and brought those mantras um, embodying the I am two different candles that I created here today. One of them being the I am brave candle. So okay. yeah. Can you tell us just a little bit more about that before we jump ahead? But sure. What is the smut, the, the smut, the smell <laughs> that's associated with that candle? Oh my gosh. So the I am brave candle, the top note right away, you're going to smell some bergamot. There's got some patchouli. There's some patchouli in there and lemon sugar. The f exciting thing about the I am brave is that it's a super fresh, clean scent. Um, all of our candles are created with um, organic essential oils and or fragrances where in, you know, if lemon sugar, for example, there isn't like a natural essential oil if I'm associated with lemon sugar. So we had to use a fragrance. Um, but for the most part, they're all natural. And um, what's exciting about this is a 10 ounce soy wax candle and the smell, it inspires like fresh, clean, like you can take a big inhale and it's an exhale and it's an excellent candle for people who like scent, but they don't like too much scent. And Absolutely. so it's perfect for the bathroom. It's working for like, you know, the kitchen really just like, you know, anywhere I light it sitting at my desk um, during the day, just kind of, I just want something 
soft and gentle, but also inspires me, infuses me to feel brave. Yes, Kara. Yes. So amazing. So I love this brave candle and it comes with, you know, here's the thing that I am brave, brave enough to do what fear used to tell me that I couldn't do. Brave mm -hmm. enough to do what people told me I couldn't do because of where I was from and, you know, how I grew up and, you know, lack of this, lack of that, or even a lot of the times we're our own biggest critic of saying, well, I don't have enough this, I don't have enough that to do this. So being brave enough to do what fear told me and fear being my own insecurity sometimes told me that I couldn't do. So I am brave. And you're going to be leading us um, so, uh, probably a little bit closer to the end. You're going to be leading us through an I am brave meditation, which I am very excited about. Yes, that's right. We're going to be going through, um, all, I love all the affirmations and all the uh, meditations that I get to do that were inspired by my candle line. Um, and yeah, so I'll be taking us through that because I feel like now, I mean, I, I, I mean, we've all exhausted this phrase, I believe, but now more than ever, but I truly believe it is the season and it's no accident that we were supposed to do this earlier this summer, but it happened to be right now. And I believe in divine timing of everything that people being brave enough to say, you know what, just because we're going into the holidays, um, just because I didn't get everything from January to November checked off my list doesn't mean I've somehow let myself down this year. We were still managing our way through and still a global pandemic, still the entire world changed. So being brave enough to remain empowered by those self-care practices, those life care practices that might have fallen to the wayside. So take this time that um, during this next few weeks or towards the end of the year where things might get a little quiet, really, um, or even loud for some of us, really be able to nuzzle into those the bravery and nuzzle into saying no, and I love you and really choosing yourself and your self care over anything else. So okay. that'll be our meditation, what our meditation will inspire. Thank you. And I was going to say that really leads into what the question <laughs> that I wanted to kick off with is you kind of answered it. But I'm going to pose it to Kira, and then I want you to dive right back in. As what does it mean to you? What does being brave mean to you? Oh my gosh, um, I, I think a, a lot of what Ace was saying, just you know, trusting yourself. You know, I, I I always think about the the hardest things in life. You know, you have to have confidence yourself to do. And so bravery means trusting yourself and knowing that you are your own best guide. You know in the end. What about you, Ace? And you kind of mentioned it, but I'd love to hear if there's anything you'd like to add. What does brave mean to me? Gosh, brave means so many things. Like I can definitely go on this topic forever, but brave to me, it means being brave enough to rethink, being brave enough to <clears throat> A big one is for me over the last few months has been brave enough to forgive Ooh. and to forgive myself um, and to forgive other people who might have, um, you know, brought any sort of transgression or anything like that towards me or towards my work or my family or anything like that, or forgive people for just, you know, maybe being you know, having a bad day, you know, like, or just having a day where things weren't going as planned and our past just so ended up crossing. Um, and, you know, they might not have had the best response or whatnot, but honestly, it's just a matter of being brave enough to forgive. Um, that's probably the biggest, the bravest thing I've done this year is forgive someone um, who really hurt myself and my, my family for a really long time. And, the minute I did that was the minute like it almost was like the floodgates started to open up and it was like the next level of ascension of where I needed to where I wanted to be but something was holding me back and I just didn't know what it was and it was forgiveness oh, it's powerful thank you so much yeah sometimes like you said it's about forgiving yourself too and that can be really powerful as well and I like here that you said that um <clears throat> listening to yourself, but then it has to be that part of yourself that you know is good, right? Because if the, the voice is saying, this isn't good, you're bad. I mean, that's not the one that we want to be listening to. That's that's the liar. You want to listen to and to the good one. 
And so, you know, and you're both yogis. Um, Alicia is a yoga teacher. And I know that Kira, you are, you've been practicing yoga for many, many years. And in yoga, we talk a lot about affirmations and intention. And um, I would love to hear, um, well, what was the, I, I kind of know, Ace, to see, you sort of said this, like what your intention was for creating your company. Um, but I'm going to give you the opportunity if you'd like to dial into that just a little bit more. And then Kira, same thing, like what is that intention? <clears throat> oh, is Kira going to go oh, me first? Or? <laughs> That's you. Oh, you I mean, OK. <laughs> Oh, me? Sorry. I was going to say Ace, but whoever wants to take oh. it, go with whoever. <laughs> okay. Uh huh? I will call on somebody. Oh, I was, okay, I was going to say, I was, that's, we're so polite, Kara. We're so yeah. polite. We're both very polite. Um, uh, very Canadian of us. Um, and so uh, I have a friend who's Canadian. I'm always like, she's so polite. Uh, and um, so, gosh, my um, affirmation just kind of what, what inspired um, the I am brave affirmation was the question or like, oh, just in, you know. you know, in general for this particular business. Oh, okay. Um, gosh, well, um, like I mentioned, kind of a little bit, I touched on it was that, you know, I would say this mantra in my classes and I actually created, when I first became a yoga teacher, I, um, my marketing background, as I mentioned, kind of a little bit before we got started. And so I was like, oh yeah, I got to get a brand. I got to get a website. I got to get business cards. I got to get postcards with my information on it. And I want to create some sort of message for the back of these cards for people so I can hand them out and whatnot. So people can take a small bit of their experience inside this brave space that I hope that I created inside the yoga studio. And so, you know, just kind of me being who I am, getting all of my ducks in a row in that regard, creating a brand. And it kind of, like I said, inspired me to create this mantra for the back of these postcards. And the mantra was, is, not was because it's not gone anywhere. It's um, may everything I do be a moving meditation. May everywhere I go be guided by peace my light is my vision and my protection. May I use it to set my soul free. And I am strong. I am brave. I am free. I am strong. I am brave. I am free. I am strong. I am brave. I am free. And that was something that I put on the back of the cards. And it was like, of course, repeat this how many times you need to in order to really start to feel it inside your bones from the inside, from the inside out. And, you know, over the last few years, or actually most of my life, especially after my mother passed away in 2002 from being out of cancer, I've just kind of held this like the strong existence. Like I'm strong. I got it. I don't need anybody to help me. I can figure it out all on, all on my own when I'm 19 year old, 19 years old dealing with like insurance companies and budgeting like more money than I'd ever seen in my entire life and all of these different things because, um, my brother, you know, for whatever reason, um, couldn't do it or wouldn't do it. Or I probably just stepped in naturally and um, took the lead. And I realized, gosh, strong is placed on women like this badge of honor. And not that there's anything wrong with being strong, because I definitely think we are. But it was like almost this debilitating thing for me actually reaching out and asking for help for people. So I was like, when I was creating the line, I was like, ah, oh, instead of me putting I am strong on there, I did stay with the I am free. So there's an I am free can. I was like, you know what? I'm brave. I'm brave enough to ask for help. I'm brave enough to say that I don't have I don't want to do this all on my own. Even if I can, I need my community. I need those closest to me. I need my brother. I need my sister-in-law. I need my friends and um, my family and my work. And so realizing that I needed all of these different things that, and my faith more than anything, my faith in God, like I needed that and not, and just kind of floating around realizing like, yeah, I need these things. And so instead of me, you know, falling into or continuing the rhetoric of I'm strong, I'm strong without recognizing the vulnerability and the tenderness that's needed as well for us all to go and be and do what we want to do here in this life. Like Kara's not running Kara Grace by herself, you know, like, and I am, you know, and I, and my thing is I'm trusting to get to the place where 
I don't want to be running my own business for myself. I have a plan in place to be able to hire a team um, next year. And so really recognizing that, really saying, all right, let, let's add this candle. Let's do this candle line, the I am collection. And so people remember that they're not alone. And the I Am Brave candle was one of my um, scents. I have I Am Beautiful, I Am Love, and I Am Free, I Am Joy. And one of my newest scents is I Am Booked and Busy, which is very we cool. That one. Like yeah. That. <laughs> yeah, which is exciting. And it's exciting, but it's also, you know, being brave enough to resign from a corporate job in the middle of a pandemic and become a full time entrepreneur. I mean, that's bravery. And that's, also very vulnerable. So I'm sure, again, Kara could attest to the vulnerability that it takes to run a business, a small business, and be an entrepreneur um, in this day and time. I mean, forever, but de definitely right now. Um, how about you, Kara? Ooh, I mean, well, AC just said so many things I want to up, right? like, comment on first. I mean, <laughs> Um, I loved um, hearing about the different candle affirmations and when you were talking about them, they they all resonate with us. And I remember um, Kira Bixby and I were discussing like which candle like felt like the space we were in. And um, I, I was really attracted to I am beautiful because I think beautiful is such a misused word. You know, beautiful means so much more. It's not, it's not a physical beauty. It's how are you feeling about yourself? And I feel like women are never we're so hard, hard on ourselves, you know, society is so hard on us and we have so many responsibilities and there's no broader shoulders than women. And, and I feel like that I am beautiful really talks to like, you're giving yourself a little gift of like, yes, you did a great job or you are beautiful. Um, but we chose I am brave, you know, um, because of the intention behind this program and this program that we establish is, is raising up other women entrepreneurs who took the risk because it is hard. It is so hard to start your own business. And you do have to sort of, you know, like walk off that cliff and hope that there's a step underneath there, you know, and there are, there is, you're just, you know, not sure exactly where it is at the time to take that step, you know, but you left a corporate career. I did too, eight years ago, you know, and I trusted myself and that's, that's is bravery. And, and you were incredibly brave making that step, but, um, I'm so proud of you. I mean, it's just Thank it's you. amazing. I love it. So um, that we chose I Am Brave because it really resonated with what the intention was behind the program. And I know, Lisa, you were asking about the business, but um, I think the business intention was really around I Am Beautiful. We really want to celebrate women's journeys because women go through so much and there's no other journey like the journey a woman goes through. And um, I wanted to create a brand that, that celebrated that and supported women through uh, our non-for-profit donations or our collaborations. And now it's kind of revolved into, you know, rising, raising up and putting the spotlight on other women-owned businesses. So. Thank you so much. And I was going to say, you know, I kind of don't know if I need to, but I was wondering as I was thinking about seeing both of you, um, I'm gonna just ask this to Kira specifically, you know, has there been, well, what affirmations have you used to keep yourself motivated when you were developing your grace? It's not really an affirmation. I've, I have a quote. I would have to dig it up. I haven't looked at it recently, but I have passed it on to other women making big and brave, <laughs> brave movements in their life. So I will completely, oh gosh, I don't even want to, I won't even do justice to it. But it is, um, it is about change and it is, um, I will try and find it while you guys are talking, I'll dig it up and I'll put it in the chat. But um, it is about embracing change because without change, you do not grow and change, although is painful, you have to embrace change to move forward. I will look it up because that is one that I, I had literally <laughs> in those early years, Asa, I mean, early, you know, for me, it was early years going through the transition of like unplugging from corporate and starting your own business. I had to have that up on my board right in front of me that I, I would look at it every single day that change is good, change is good, change is positive and, um, and just believe in myself, you know? And so I will, I will go look for that right now. Cause I think it's a powerful. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Actually, believe in yourself. You know, that's the, the believing in yourself here. That's so spot on. 
Um, and just kind of like, just adding to a little bit that's so spot on. And like, you know, you realize once you're stepping into it, and I'm a, I'm a baby here um, in regards to their entrepreneurship. But I think that what a lot of times, a lot of entrepreneurs is what I've noticed, don't really talk about the emotional, you know, growth and the emotional maturity that it's almost like a 101 going back to kindergarten again. Um, a lot of the times, if you've not done a lot of the work and had a lot, a lot of the tools that you and I both have as yogis, you know, going into the, I can't imagine if I didn't have the toolbox and do, choosing the career to move into, to step away from in corporate America and move into as a wellness brand, I can't imagine if I would have been able to sustain for almost a year now without that emotional support that, that going to the yoga, being the yoga, going to my breath, meditating, all of those different things and believing that I can do this and having someone in my corner say, well, I very rarely believe in anybody and I believe in you. So if you ever question whether or not you're doing it right or you belong here, just know I believe in you and that's it. And I was like, okay. And as a person who is again, floated through life by herself, choosing the loner road most of the time, that was something for me that was so important to say, hey, it's all right, I believe in you, but we, it really needed to come from me in order for it to really stick, you know? So I love that you said that. So I found the quote, it wasn't hard. I just had to search one second. Okay, I'll read it out because it is about that. It's, um, it's Alan Cohen. It takes a lot of courage to release the familiar and seemingly secure to embrace the new, but there is no real security in what is no longer meaningful. There is more security in the adventurous and exciting for in movement there is life and in change there is power. Mm. Boom. I mean, that yeah. was the shit Sorry for me because there is no real security. We just imagine it, you know, for someone to think that your corporate job is secure, that is imagined. That's not real. So, so movement is real and movement is security. And that's where I love that quote so much, but anyway, literally had it up for years and it's still like it embroidered and posted on your wall or something like that, you know, <laughs> throw pillows and everything, like just whatever we can do to inspire people. Well, um, as this is, uh, this whole VIP event is to support and uplift women. I just wanted to ask each of you who your role model, your role models or inspiration have been um, in this process. I don't care who takes it first. Maybe we start with Ace. Um, okay, my, um, gosh, my role models um, in all of this has been, I mean, all of, I mean, my, my great, my inspirations has been definitely like the students that I get to teach and the spaces that I get to hold for them, right? So that energy there, first and foremost. Um, secondly, my inspiration has been um, my mother um, and, you know, realizing that had she maybe had these tools available to her um, when she was still here Earthside, um, then maybe, you know, I don't know if it would have completely, you know, I've had her life be you know, have her bypass, you know, getting pancreatic cancer, but maybe during that process, we would have been able to move through these different tools together. Um, and at that time when she had it, she had it for long during that time, which was considered for a long time during that, um, during those years. Um, so she's been my inspiration, but even freeing, it's been a forgiveness exercise with um, my own mother in her spiritual realm over this past year and free myself for me to be my own inspiration like my story the story the, the many life the many lives that i've lived since bo being born up until now being 38 years old like it's an insp i inspire myself to honestly keep going because I have always kept going, but now my vision is so clear and it's so pure and it's so like, you know, it's, it's space in there for magic. And it's also space in there to understand that, like you said, in change, there's power. That's the strength and recognizing and saying, oh, I forgive life for changing and I forgive myself for changing along with life. I forgive myself for changing my mind, even though um, I might've let someone down. 
or I might've let myself down. And so my, like, you know, my, my own story being my own inspiration. Um, there's definitely people who, and who are, who have their businesses and run their lot, their lives and hold themselves in this regard. That is truly an inspiration to me. Um, and, and how I model my life, like Tracy Stanley is fantastic. She's, um, one of my teacher, one of my, one of the greatest teachers and a lot of people's teachers here. And she's beautiful and how she models her life is truly inspiring. Um, and of course, like Dr. Maya Angelou, um, she's a, a great inspiration, a, um, a ancestor that, you know, is set the way for in, in set the path for me to us to even really be sitting here together today. Um, I'd also say that, you know, uh, gosh, who else like Tracy Stanley, um, Dr. Maya Angelou, I really love bell hooks, um, as an author, she wrote the book all about love and that, you know, love is my greatest inspiration. Um, honestly being, letting my life be led by love, choosing love, choosing love every single day, because without love, there can't be joy. There can't be peace. There can't be forgiveness. So, um, yeah, those are just, you know, a few that I have top of mind right now I'm sure I have a whole list somewhere but yeah <laughs> and I'm sure that you're inspiring a lot of people right now and eventually oh. you're be right up there with Tracy Stanley you know, <laughs> Thank and you. Others. so yes I love that that you're inspiring to yourself and your own story can be an inspiration and Kira how about you what female role models are who would they be gosh you know I, I first started thinking about the you know the women who have succeeded in corporate America or built really big businesses. But if I'm really honest, I, that those aren't actually inspiring to me. I think what the women who have inspired me are the women who have created change. And it's like, um, you know, I'm a lot older than you guys. So when I was in my twenties and thirties, I was in corporate America where corporate America looked really different than it does today. And, and it was all male and just, just, you know, I don't even need to say anymore. There was one woman and her name was Grace Nichols and she ran Victoria's Secret. She was the CEO of Victoria's Secret. She was one of the few women in the United States that had a job that size. And she grew that business and she did it by just being smart, equitable, and fair. And she inspired me so much in her values. And, and she was she was all business. Believe me, she was all business, but there were no favors. There were no, it was here we are. We're going to work today. These are the things we're going to do. Let's hit these goals. It was just, she, she really inspired me because she was competing in, and this is decades ago, right? Competing in a very different world than, than today. And I'm not saying it's easy for women now. Um, and it's not, but it was really hard then to, to create, to move forward in and achieve what she did. And, and the way she, she did it. Um, I'm still in touch with her today because I just, she she impacted me so deeply in the way she ran that business and the way she um, was just, it was just all fair. I, I, I'd never been in an organization like that, you know, where I'm like, wow, everyone's actually treated fairly. Like, anyway, so she, she really impacted me deeply. Um, but other women who have impacted me um, are, I go straight to my, my yoga teachers, you know, um, Desiree Rumba for moving through such incredible personal trauma to move through that and find it in herself to create and teach and lead. And I, I am not sure I have the strength to do what she has done in her life um, because her trauma is so, so immense. Um, and um, then other teachers that have impacted me um, are like Anna Forrest and Anna Forrest because she is such a warrior and she carves her own way. She's one of the first women that started her own whole yoga practice and, you know, forest yoga and trademarked that and built a business from it. And, um, and she's, she's so strong. She's so committed to her own individuality. And I, and I respect her so much for, for what she does and what she's created for us and created other opportunities for people. Um, Cause she started to break open this, you know, male dominant yoga world. Right? <laughs> so um, th uh, those are the three that come to mind for, for me right away. I mean, there are so many other uh, people who have inspired me along the journey, but those are right up there. Mm -hmm. 
get, you know, as a yogi, those uh, Anna, it's so inspiring. Desiree, my first first place I ever taught was a Desiree studio in Arizona, called Arizona Yoga. So she is, she's amazing. She's so inspiring and she brings such joy that you can try to like that and still, you know, embody joy and live a positive life and impact so many other people that are around you. I think that's so important, I think, for people to understand and to know. And I, that, you know, I think it comes back to I am brave too. Mm-hmm. In, uh, we're all going to have challenges, whether it's in business or it's in our personal lives or in our relationships. And that I believe that we are all strong enough, that we all have it within ourselves. You say, I don't know if I could do that. Well, hopefully we never have to, but that you have the stuff that's necessary in order to do it. And I think it's so important. I just want to say that I think it's so important to have female role models. Um, I think that both of you are wonderful mom role models. And to all the women who are here today that are listening or may watch this, um, you know, to, to look to you, uh, not to put you on a pedestal or anything, but as an example that this can be done, that this can be done. So thank you. And with that, as far as inspiration, how do your customers inspire you? Customers, how do the customers inspire me? Mm-hmm. Um, the customers inspire me to ask for what I want. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, let's like, let's just be honest, Kara, like, because there's nothing bolder than a customer asking for what they want when um, they absolutely may or may not be in some sort of way, shape or fashion, not entitled to that, but they're going to ask anyway. And so um, now I'm going to, and I'm going to get to like another actual answer too, but that's a real answer because I think I'm like, I, at the first is the start of all of this. Like I started at the candle line in the middle of last year, July, like right kind of after during the time the Black Lives Matter movement was happening. And I was like, I need to do something. So I started a candle business. And so I, um, of course, have been working for someone working for the best in class of businesses most of my of my entire career. So I knew the, the, the fundamentals of business. I knew the fundamentals of someone else's business, though someone else's model, someone else's structure. So learning that on my own was a very beautiful journey, but it was also really like bumps and bruises along the way. And I had this plan. It was like, okay, I'm going to resign from my job. I'm going to, you know, have this candle business that's going really well. I can't believe how good it's going. Like, right. I mean, like pre-sales sold out all of my supply. Like I've done that actually three times. And then it was like, oh, last year happened around the holidays when everything was held up in inner space land. And I was like, no supplies, no inventory. And, and it was like, Oh, what did I just do? What did I just, I just quit my job. What, how am I going to feed myself? How am I going to do this? So I, I'm not actually had a chance to really like talk about this story very much because it was just like a really dark time for me for like kind of the beginning of this year and kind of towards like almost a year ago, I had no supplies and I had these orders and I had customers like looking at me like, what's going on? What's going on? And I, but I, I remained and I was brave enough to say, oh my gosh, I had no idea that this could even be a possibility. And that was for me, it was like, okay, lesson learned, lesson learned that step back, take time, take these processes, take these baby steps in the same way of me becoming a yoga teacher the trainings, the classes, the practice, all of those different things, practice teaching and whatnot, like putting that into place. And so there were dark moments at the top of this year and the better part of this summer. I mean, it was really, it was, it was a tough go. Um, but I was brave enough to remain because it wasn't time for me to give up. It wasn't time for me to put it to side, even though I was like ready to like wash my hands of it. Cause I was like, this is, this is this is too much i'm um, especially me being a one-man show but i said all right well let's just focus on what we do have right so that's a perspective shift and that's like the you know if you can't change it change the way that you look at it like i'm butchering dr maya angelou's quote um but it's essentially the same in which you know where the quote that you just um put told us about Kara, nothing changes and nothing nothing changes. So I'm going to change and look at what I do have. I have my yoga. I have all these different things that I have outside of only the candle component of my business. So 
really seeing myself broader than I thought I was, seeing myself bigger than I thought I was, even me being brave enough to say I'm my own inspiration, I would have never said that a year ago. It would have always been me hiding behind like, oh, my mom and oh, other people, which again, there's nothing wrong with that because the customers are my greatest teachers. The students are my greatest teachers. Like um, my teachers are my greatest teachers, right? But, you know, having the uh, the, the bravery, ha being brave enough to say like, I am inspiring myself because I'm remaining and having these customers that, it's not a bad problem to have having customers waiting for your stuff versus them not buying your stuff at all. So looking at it from that perspective and the support and also the big thing that customers taught me was patience and forgiveness and understanding because there were only like, and I count myself as lucky, maybe about four people out of fat, like fat, literally thousands who have bought my candles who were upset. Those eyes are not too shabby. Yeah. And so Jennifer Pasiloff, who's like a, my sister, soul sister, was like, you know what? Here's what we're going to do. Every day, we're just going to expect to get some sort of negative email, some sort of something, right? And when we don't, hey, that's a win for the day, right? So looking at it at that perspective, because I was really getting down on myself, but what those customers did, the ones who were patient, were forgiving, were understanding, they taught me to be that for myself. You know, like to be that for myself and to, um, you know, yeah, but really just like, no, ask for what I want, be brave enough to ask for what I want, and then also be, be patient and kind and forgiving in the process. That's the biggest thing that my customers and my yoga students teach me every single time I get to teach a yoga class. So, or send out a candle. So, yeah. Thank you for sharing that story with us too, because it's like, it's important for people to know that we have these questions ourselves, right? And that you go through these difficult things. And I really appreciate you sharing that. And really good lessons also from your customers. So Kira, it's your turn now. So how, how have my customers inspired me? Oh my gosh, all the time. I mean, we, um, I feel like we talk to them all the time. You know, I read every single review. I really do. Every single one I read. Um, and respond to a handful and they're always telling you what you can do better, you know, or how much they love certain things and give you more of them. You know, I, I, I love that. I love that connectivity. We also, um, yeah, I mean, we have lots of different opportunities for customers to connect with us, whether it's on Facebook, Instagram, or in our, um, uh, directly to customer. I don't know. There are just so many different ways. We also run these surveys all the time, but you're right. Uh, um, Ace, like they will absolutely tell you what they want next. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. They're like, well, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I've, been just, I've been just receiving a ton of, um, a ton of messages lately about it is time. And I love this one customer. She was like, your pants are so beautiful. I love them. I have a lot of them, you know, some, and she said, but it is time now that you offer them in petite blanks. She was like, it's just time. And I'm like, thank you. Thank you for bearing with us and supporting us while we're growing because you can't offer everything in every size. You know, you just right. can't, you can't do candles like in every flavor. You just can't, you know, and it takes time. And then you have to grow into those next opportunities. And and I love that she said that, you know, that it's time. And I thought, yeah, you know, it probably is time, you know, that we start adding some additional links. But um, anyway, so I feel like I'm hearing from our customers all the time and they're constantly making me think about what we can do next or improve or do more of the things that they love. Something I really, really like uh, that I've noticed here on the website is that even when people are complaining, when customers are complaining, there was a positive response. Like, thank you so much for sharing. And I think that that has a powerful effect also on the customer, that they're being heard and that you're willing to have a conversation with them about that. So oh, we learn from our customers all the time. So, I mean, sometimes things are just human. You know, I, we, we do make our products in the United States and they are humans that are sewing them together, you know? And so, um, we want to know if there's something that's not working, we want to replace it. Like, or if there's something in our process that isn't working, we always thank customers for that because we improve our own processes by getting feedback. If we don't get feedback, we think everything's great, you know? Mm -hmm. And if we don't hear from them, then we don't know. 
So we want the opportunity to fix things, make them smoother, make them better. And, and it's that loop of feedback that helps us improve. So I, I welcome all feedback. I love hearing when we've got something right, but if we've got something wrong, it's really important that we hear it too, because, um, if it's impacting one person it's probably impacting a lot more. And, and if we don't know, we can't fix it because we're not always on that, the same journey, right? We're, we, uh, believe me, I have a lot of Cara Grace clothes, but not the entire thing. <laughs> so if there's something going on, we want to know, you know, or anyway, it, I, I just think that feedback is really, really important. Well, boy, the time is going very quickly. So I want to ask <laughs> more short, like really short nugget answers. So we have plenty of time for the meditation. We want to try to leave and no later than five minutes after five, the latest. So um, aiming for five o'clock. So um, what I wanted to ask you is, um, Ace, what is coming up? What else is on the horizon? Do you have anything else coming um, beyond your candles? Uh, beyond my candles, uh, yeah, I have a really, um, like I mentioned, the, I have a yoga retreat coming up December 25th through January 1st that is um, uh, completely, uh, it's sold out. Um, and so, which is like, I'm so, I mean, the, the way that that came together was just so beautiful and divine. Um, I see my friend uh, Sarah on here who owns um, Pure Dharma. So we, um, she's uh, going to be partnering with me and providing really um, amazing goodies for those who are attending. Um, and uh, Pure Dharma is this amazing, you know, skincare, like just soul <laughs> cleansing brand. So just working with more um, brands in that regard, skincare, life care um, brands next year, including Pure Dharma. And then we also, and then I have a big retreat, um, a retreat, excuse me, for Mother's Day that I'm planning at Carefree Arizona at Safana. Um, it's called Z the Savana, C I B A N A. So that's going to be Mother's Day weekend. And I'm really excited about that because, y'all, when I was 19 and my mom like left this earth, and you could not tell me that almost 20 years later, I would be hosting a mother daughter getaway retreat at this amazing five star resort where Deepak Chopra does his resorts or does his workshops and um, retreats now, whatnot. That it would be something that, A, I would get to experience as a guest and B, I would be hosting my own thing there. So a continuation of remaining brave through all the things. Um, and so with regards to the candle line, we're adding, um, two more scents. Um, and so those will be up in the next like week, actually, if not before. And so just adding to the brand and reorganizing our approach for for next year. So excited to collaborate with more local um, people with who create candles and create more unique, exclusive looks and whatnot. So working with more people, more collaborations in the next um, year is on the horizon. And towards the end of next year or potentially February of 2023, um, I'm going to be doing a huge retreat in Africa. So um, stay tuned for more details on that. But but it's going to be fantastic. Something, like I said, I got to experience a safari um, about 12 years ago. Um, gosh, was it? Yeah, it was about 11 or 12 years ago. I got to experience a safari and it changed my life. So being able to, again, be full circle and be this little girl who grew up in both or was born in Baltimore, grew up in Atlanta, Georgia, like thriving here in Los Angeles, doing these things, making these plans, sitting on this amazing Zoom call with um, powerful business owner like Kara and Lisa and, you know, working with this brand and being able to model um, and do that. So more of that too. So yeah, that was, um, so just continue to stay open to what God wants for my life. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's some pretty major stuff. <laughs> that is so exciting. And we're really, I'm just really happy for you. It's such a big year coming up. And I think that for, um, if you don't follow Ace, you should go ahead and follow her. Ace, why don't you go ahead and drop in the chat sure. that is, that you can see all the different offerings that are coming up. Now I'm going to Ask Summer or Brittany, whoever's in charge of drawing. You can see that we have people here. It's, uh, I believe, um, Summer, if she's still around. 
There you uh, go. No, it's actually uh, uh, me. Why don't you ask a question or whatever it is that you're going to put out there for them um, in order to answer and be entered? Yeah, of course. So um, Ace mentioned that her customers inspire her. So, and she had a couple of answers. So um, name at least one of um, how she's inspired by her customers. So just enter if that. If you want to drop, drop it in the chat. And then we're going to go ahead, after you do that, we're going to have Ace lead us in a short meditation. It's I am brave meditation. I think it's an amazing way for us to kind of cap this off. And then um, Summer will announce who won. And um, I love it. I love seeing it. Like just that first thing to ask for. Oh. Go ahead and enter it. And come on, y'all. I think a lot of people are on their phones. So <laughs> there's some having to move with your thumbs if possible. But in the meantime, why don't you go ahead? Let's just kick this off. And, um... Okay. So um, we're going to be moving through a I am brave meditation to. Um, so when you are ready, just uh, kind of get yourself seated in a comfortable cross-legged position, or if you're in a chair at your desk and cross leg is not accessible, then you could just have your feet 90, your knees bent 90 degrees. Take about 30 seconds to adjust yourself, gaze around, just ensure that you know, you're able to have your spine sit up tall, sit up well, like a freshly bloomed flower. Wonderful. And then once you're settled, softly begin to fill your sits bones underneath you, feeling your breath kind of move organically from the bottoms of your feet all the way up to the crown of your head. Nice. Relax your shoulders. Allow your core to soften. And spine to remain tall. Something supporting you. Your back so you can surrender here only for a few minutes. Seeing the breath now, drawing a white healing light of energy from the bottoms of your feet. Imagine this white healing light traveling with your breath all the way up to the crown of your head. Good. Taking an inhale through your nose. Sigh it out, let it go. Two more like that. Inhale through your nose. Sigh it out, let it go. Last one here, friends. Inhale through your nose. Sigh it out, let it go. Now along this white healing light that you've brought to your mind's eye, I invite you now to bring our centering thought to the front of your mind. I am brave. I am brave. I am brave. When you inhale, inhale, I am. And exhale, brave. Notice the tips of your toes. Softly wiggle them. And notice the spark of light in your big toe. See this spark of light travel up your shins, travel to your knee, 
I am brave. Allow the spark of light to move up your thigh. Move to your pelvis. Move to your hips. Find its way to your belly button. I am brave. Allow the light to move up to your heart center. To your shoulders. Down your arms. Stopping at the eye of your elbow. I am brave. Allow the spark of light to travel from the eye of your elbow down your forearm to your wrist and to each of your fingers. I am brave. Allow the light to trace itself outside of you as it travels to your throat. Spark of light at your throat center. I am brave. Relax your jaw. Relax your tongue away from the roof of your mouth. Allow the light to travel up to behind your eyes. I am brave. And then allow the light to meet at your midbrain, your third eye. I am brave. And then allow the light to create a halo around your crown. A golden halo. I am brave. Move through that on your own for the next two minutes. And any time you feel distracted, bring to your mind's eye, I am brave.
we begin to make our way out of our meditation, bring soft, subtle movements to your fingers and in your toes. Deeply breathing back into your body. It only takes a few moments, a few minutes a day to remind yourself to breathe, to be mindful, and know that you are brave. If you ever wonder or in doubt, pause, take your hands over your heart, and repeat our centering thought affirmation today, I am brave. As we make our way out, softly bring your palms together, rub them together briskly. Take your hands over your eyes, feeling the heat you generated, the prana. And slowly blink your eyes open, readjusting to the light, readjusting to your space around you. Take your time. Thank you so much for allowing me to guide you through this I Am Brave meditation this evening. My prayer for you is that you stay brave in your pursuit of joy. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I wanted to let Lisa know that she won the I Am Brave handle. Um, she, if you could just enter your contact information so that we, your grace, can send that to you. And thank you so, so much, Grace, for the joy, the, the love, the light, the inspiration that you brought to all of us. I've really enjoyed it, and I've learned a lot. And it, it's just been such a joy. She's a warrior ambassador for your grace, and I'm really happy and proud that I can be in association with you as an ambassador as well. Um, Y'all, affirmations are powerful and they really make an impact. And I'm sure that after that meditation, that you can see that they do indeed have a strong impact. So I wanna encourage all of you to be brave. Her candle, Ace's candle, is going to be featured for a little bit on the Cured Grace website. And also if you, um, the information also like that. Tara, do you want to quickly say how they can purchase that or whether how they can get it as part of their gift? I'm going to have to bounce. Oh, sure. I mean, if it's, um, I mean, you could just, it's on, on our website so you can buy it. And then if you're um, a Cure Grace um, Platinum member, I think you just log on to your account and you will see it there as a benefit for December. And you just add that, I believe it's a code. I'm not sure um, Brittany manages that, but I think it's just a code you apply at checkout and you get that free with your purchase um, for the month of December. So it's a good time to buy Christmas yeah. gifts, y'all. That's what I'm saying. So um, I'm going to go get one for myself. And oh, I great. Uh, Brittany just added it to the chat. Yeah. Oh, and yes, you see, look at all the love that you're getting. Lots of thank yous, beautiful meditation. Just soak it in and just know that you've made a difference. Once mm -hmm. again, thank you for sharing your time and your energy and your light with us. And I hope that you all have a blessed evening and an amazing holiday season. Thank you, okay. Lisa. Thank you, Asia. Thank you. Good to see you. So good thank to see you. you guys. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you all so much. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Oh, love you. Love you, Sarah. Bye. <laughs>